Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm sitting here in the middle of the frame of Project Snowball. Running some wiring across a new cross member and uh, doing some plumbing and stuff. I'm standing here looking at the steering box. And I remember that somebody mentioned a while ago, and it was a good idea at the time, I just kind of spaced it. Somebody said I should do a video kind of explaining some of the stuff about the steering box since I'm right here. So I'm going to do that real quick. Um, I'm going to do another video on it later on, not right now. Um, I've got one that's in a little piece of a cutoff frame section. The shaft is cut off. I'm going to throw it on the bench and actually open up the box and show you what's inside of it. But we're not doing that right now. Um, so the steering box, this is an old Ross box, obviously. Manual steering, no hydraulic assist. Um, it says Ross right there. On the box... The only important things are uh, like the adjustment and the fill and drain points, okay? So right here, this is your fill plug. And you're supposed to use 80-90 gear oil in this. Um, you can also use a double-ot grease. That's what most guys use in them anymore because they have a habit of leaking out of the uh, seal over here on the, the pitman arm shaft. So uh, I guess you'd call that the sector shaft. Anyway, this is the fill port. This little plug right here is your um, your fill level port. So when you're filling this up, you should have this out. And you fill it up until oil starts dribbling out of here. Then you know it's full. Then you put this plug in. This here, that plug, is the drain plug. Because, yeah, you actually are supposed to change the oil in these every once in a you know couple decades. Uh, all square drives, you may have some hex in yours. Um, I've seen different ones. Not really consequential, but um, it is what it is. So this is, of course, your horn wire. Now this is going to get replaced. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, just sits in here with this little rubber split plug. And uh, it's a good idea if you still got this, if it hasn't fallen off yet, to go ahead and glue that in. Um, if you're wire is rotten replace that while you can um, before you glue this in preferably and because um, if this falls out and your horn shorts on that it rubs through because this is metal and uh, then your horn goes off constantly um, the only other thing is this right here this is your sector shaft preload adjustment so if you got a little bit of slop in your steering or a lot of bit of slop in your steering um, have somebody move your steering wheel uh, from where it touches to where it touches where you can feel the slack get taken up and watch and see if your sector shaft here is moving if it's not moving until uh, it gets to the stop each time that means the slack is in your box not in your steering linkage so you can take up some of that slack by tightening this and the way you do that you'll need a flathead screwdriver it's probably a stubby it's real hard to get to with the multi-fuel in here because the injector pump is like right here and um, but you'll want to hold this, uh, hold the slot with a screwdriver and break this nut loose. And then you'll want to tighten this with the screwdriver, turn it clockwise. And uh, you only want to go a little bit at a time, okay? So you break this nut loose and back it off a little bit and tighten it, tighten this an eighth to a quarter turn at a time and then feel your steering wheel. Every time you tighten this, you'll feel the slack in your steering wheel get less and less. If you over tighten that, it's, it will get to the point where you may make a turn in the truck and then when you go to straighten back out, it'll lock up or you'll be turning and it'll lock up. If you get it too tight, it's bad too. So you want to leave a little bit of play in the steering. Um, when you get done tightening it, be sure to hold that still as you can and then snug that back down with the wrench. Um, other than that, not really a lot that goes wrong with them uh, every once in a while. If they're not maintained, you know, uh, I mean, they, of course, they leak out of that seal, which to fix that, you've got to take the whole box apart. And if you run them with no oil in them or a lot of water contamination, it will actually uh, eat the two pawls in there, the little tabs off, and then you'll be making a turn and your steering will just keep turning. Or you go to straighten out and it won't straighten out uh, because it'll eat or break off the little tabs in there that ride on the worm gear. So... Um, check the oil in your box. 
If there's no oil in it, put some oil in it. If it won't hold oil, put some grease in it. Double ought grease, not wheel bearing grease. If you fill that up with wheel bearing grease, it's going to cause you more problems. So, um, take care of your box, man. It's the next most important thing to your brakes. If that steering goes out, you're going to kill yourself or somebody else. So, uh, good idea to upgrade to hydraulic power steering if you've got the money. WaterlooSpecialties.com, Tom. He, uh, sells a power steering kit for these trucks it's not cheap okay it's i think it's 2650 bucks or something along those lines but it is absolutely everything the entire kit free shipping of course um, but for the multi-fuel engine you know you get the pump the adapter the gear you get all the lines you get the steering box all the hardware the uh, reservoir everything it's a ready to go kit so all you got to do is throw it on uh, well you got to drill some holes in the frame but uh, it's a whole lot safer than this old uh, manual steering setup. So give that a thought. Uh, it's well worth your time. It makes the truck a lot more drivable, too. I wish I could afford it to put it on this right now. I've got a power steering pump. I wouldn't even need the whole kit. I'd just need, like, uh, the bracket in the box and part of the steering column, the steering wheel, and stuff like that. You know, I can make, get my own lines made up, but uh, I just I can't afford that right now, so. Uh, but later on, maybe. I know he's not going to be making them forever. He said he's only going to make about 80 more of those kits. So if you're going to get one, do it soon. Uh, he already stopped making the overdrive kit for the Spicer transmission. So um, that is a hell of a loss to the community. But it is what it is. Man can't make a profit. He's not. You can't expect him to keep losing money. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, please like the video. If you'd like to see more, subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check out our sponsors that are listed in the description below. We get all of our hard parts from Big Mike's Motor Pool. And we get all of our paint and body supplies. And in the future, we'll be getting Jeep parts from RapcoParts.com. They specialize in that stuff. So uh, give them a shout. Tell them I sent you or that you saw it on the Tactical Repair channel. And we'll see you on the next one, guys. Later.